Don't jock. Hi, can you tell me your name? Hi, it's Dominic Diatilio. I'm the president of the Association of New Jersey Recyclers. We're at our annual ANGER meeting where we have presentations besides our business meeting. One of the items that we're looking at today and presentations are being made is the recycling of organics. In New Jersey, there is one licensed facility to accept uh, food waste and other materials, organics, you could cut that out. There's only one facility licensed in New Jersey to accept organics, and it's Ag Choice uh, in, from Sussex County. And we have one of our presenters here today, Jay Fisher from Ag Choice. Jay? Good morning, Jay, Jay Fisher. I am the founder and president of Ag Choice Organics Recycling. We are located in Andover Township, Sussex County, New Jersey. And we are New Jersey's only licensed food waste recycler currently in the state. Uh, we accept a multitude of organics, pre and post consumer food waste, as well as leaves, brush, uh, miscellaneous uh, industrial organic waste for compost. And uh, this summer we're excited, we're looking forward to implementing a new machine that will actually depackage uh, food waste for recycling. Jay, uh, give us an example of pre and post to define take, what that is. We can take plate waste, which would be post consumer. Uh, restaurant scrapings, uh, kitchen prep would be pre-consumer. Uh, grocery store waste, culls, uh, material that's spoiled before it got sold is also pre-consumer. Okay, very good. And do you have any, are there any municipal source separated waste programs feeding your Not at this time. Everything that we do currently is with private businesses, uh, various corporations, large and small. Uh, you mentioned uh, during your presentation earlier today at the meeting that uh, uh, Superstorm Sandy was a benefit to your company in a way, although it was uh, you know, a big damage to other folks. Tell, tell us what kind of material it brought to you that you wouldn't have perhaps seen otherwise. There was a, a large volume of warehouses along the East Coast, particularly in Kearney, Jersey City, Newark, Elizabeth, New Jersey, that were unfortunately affected with large volumes of water. Uh, some of the warehouses were overwhelmed with about 14 foot of seawater. So things like coffee beans, we got approximately 3,000 tons of coffee beans. Uh, at this point we're up to about 500 tons of various spices and seeds. Uh, bird seed, uh, edible spices, all kinds of different materials that are brought in from overseas in bulk containers and stored at these warehouses for distribution. Very interesting. And you said that you uh, are expanding this year. Your business is doing well. You're adding employees. It's been very exciting. Uh, the growth has been tremendous. We're averaging about 500% a year in growth. Uh, this last year, we've added four employees over the last six months. Uh, over the next six months, we plan on adding four more, uh, including office staff, drivers, laborers. Uh, we have a pool of about 25 part-time uh, workers we bring in to help with the depackaging. It's very exciting. Very good. If folks want to learn more about you, do you have a website? Yes, we do. It's www.ag-choice.com. Go to our website, learn about our various uh, programs and services, and uh, give us a call when you're ready. Very good. And Dominic, your membership. Tell us again about who, who are the members of Andrew. Our membership is made up of business people, manufacturers, collectors, haulers that deal with recycling. Most of the county coordinators and municipal recycling coordinators, as well as private citizens. So they're the folks that uh, operate and run the municipal, the programs, the recycling programs. Our in your membership town or is your everything county. from the planners to the collectors to the uh, processors to the marketers. And where can folks find you online? Anjur.com. Okay, it's A N J R.com. Correct. Thank you both. Hi, can you tell me who you are? Paul Salou, uh, founder and CEO of Harvest Power. Paul, you spoke today at the Anjar annual meeting uh, about organic waste, about your company. Tell us, give us a little bit of background about yourself, first of all, how you got into this uh, business. Start there. Great. I've been in the organics business close to 30 years. Uh, started with composting and now with Harvest Power. We're 
one of the largest composters of uh, yard and food uh, waste materials in, in North America. And we also now are bringing online some very interesting renewable energy projects uh, fueled uh, with the yard and food waste using a technology uh, called anaerobic digestion. And uh, you have some facilities up and operating in New Jersey, not necessarily anaerobic digestion. Tell, tell us what you're doing in New Jersey. So. Yeah, we're the largest processor of, of green waste in New Jersey, and so we, we operate uh, over 10 sites and market uh, close to a million cubic yards of, uh, of product on an annual basis. So we look at New Jersey as a great opportunity, start with the yard waste where we've got a big, big presence, and then move into food waste. But then when we do that, we look to bring in our renewable energy technology, anaerobic digestion. Okay, so right now what you're doing, when you say yard waste, you're talking about leaves and grass clippings? Yes. Brush, brush in that too? Well. Yes. Yeah, okay, very good. And the product you're making, what comes we out of it? We make high quality compost and compost based soil blends. We make a variety of different kind of mulch products. So you know, everything that you'd want to use around your home, landscaping, uh, environment, and also agriculture. Great. Now you say you'd like to get into uh, food waste as well. Uh, why does New Jersey present a good opportunity for a company like yours? Well, great population density, uh, surrounded by major urban areas and, and, and well-developed suburban areas. So uh, it represents close to 15% of, of what we call you know, municipal solid waste. So right now, the vast majority of it, over 95% per the EPA, is being landfilled or sent to incinerators. So we think there's an opportunity to divert that and to a higher and better use. Make renewable energy out of it and recover the organic matter and nutrients in the form of a fertilizer. In your presentation earlier today to the ANJAR membership, uh, you gave us an example of uh, what's done in Germany. Give us the contrast. You know. Yeah, Germany, uh, the major part of the renewable energy industry, and it's probably the most advanced of any major industrialized country in the world, Germany, the major component is renewable energy from organics. So we think, you know, the United States, which has an economy four times the size of Germany, has an opportunity to take that model and have it have it be a major part of an overall cost-effective renewable energy strategy. And uh, here in, come back to New Jersey again, uh, what are you looking to do here? You said you would like to partner with a uh, progressive-minded county. Yes, How we're, we work with, you know, close to 200 different municipal entities right now. And we have a good customer base, so we're engaging them right now. We're trying to determine what county we want to focus on and bring bring the uh, solution for food waste, which is proven. And we have in operations at other places throughout North America, so everybody can see it. And we think New Jersey is a great place to invest and grow our business. So if you got a cooperative county, I guess you would make the investment and build a facility to process this potato. Absolutely. And yes. the county would you would be leaning on them to, I guess to bring it in, to do the, uh, require the source separation of this material from home, homeowners and others, and then collect it and get it to you, Yeah, right? I mean, we'll, we'll manage the, we work with haulers and manage the collection, but we really want to have a public-private partnership where we can get a site where we're welcomed by the community. We'll build a state-of-the-art facility with our capital. We'll uh, look to get the commercial organics first, and then we want then the municipal organics through curbside collection to follow. And I, I think it's the next next phase that's coming in organics recycling in North America. Wonderful. If folks would like to learn more about your company, where will they find you? www.harvestpower.com uh, or uh, Matt Vistano and Nick Venny uh, here in uh, New Jersey. Oh, and we should say that uh, uh, actually gentlemen are with you today. Two of the folks who are working with you? Or? Yeah, no, Matt, Matt, Matt Vistano, John Kastner, and under the leadership of Nick Venny, who runs our operations here. So we've got you know, 150 hardworking people here in New Jersey. Very good. Well, let's say hello to these two folks who are here with us today. Want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm John Kastner, uh, the new, newly uh, employed member of uh, Harvest Power and Reliable Wood and Nature's Choice in our New Jersey operations. And John, some folks might know you from your previous uh, uh, employment. Where were you before my, you came? My previous life was with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, I served New Jersey for 36 years in a variety of capacities involved in solid waste management and recycling here in New Jersey. Great. Well, good luck to you, John, in your new role here. Thank you. And you, sir. Hi, I'm Matt Vistano. And, uh, Paul and I, I believe we were pioneers in the composting business in uh, the eastern uh, sector of the U.S. And uh, I've been involved with uh, recycling organics for about 28 years now. Very good.
And you're operating out of what town? What what office? Are you? Our main office is in Jersey City right now, but we have facilities all over the state of New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Great. Well, thank you all, and best of luck with your business. Hi, can you tell me your name? Janet Pellicaro. Uh, Janet, you're here at the ANJAR annual business meeting in which the big topic uh, of the day is organic waste recycling. And uh, you are, as I was kidding you earlier, you are the poster child in New Jersey for organic waste recycling. Uh, and because you have the only municipal program in which uh, residents are su separating their, their waste, their food waste, mm -hmm. uh, for recycling. Tell us a little bit how, how that started and give us a, some background on the program. Yeah. Princeton Township, the first municipality in the state of New Jersey, did start a curbside organic program in uh, June of 2011 is when we started the collection. We started the planning of it in uh, 2010, June of 2010, and by 2011 we finally got it up off the ground running. We did it, started it as a three-month pilot program. We had about 160 residents in the home. We were able to work it out because we, in Princeton Township, the former Princeton Township, we were subscription trash service so every resident in the township had to contract privately for their trash services so it was easy for us to be able to get the program going because since they were already paying to have their trash taken away we were able to offer them a cheaper way of doing it by telling them that by removing the organics from it they would not have to weigh their garbage across Mercer County scales which is a requirement and that they can get rid of their garbage cheaper and turn their garbage into organics instead of sending it to a landfill. So it was really easy to institute it that way. We started it as a three-month pilot program. We had about 160 homes in the program at the time. We were averaging about two to three tons per week during the three-month trial period. During the week of 4th of July, we actually did seven tons for that one week. So it was wow. pretty, pretty impressive. And during that time, we found that about 60 to 75 homes in the program were not putting out a trash container on a weekly basis. So they noticed right off the bat a difference in how they, how they were processing their garbage. And the phone calls that I would get about, what do I do with this and can I put this in, it's just been amazing. It's really been a great program. They do have to pay for the program now. We finally got it to the point with the consolidation of Princeton Township and Princeton Borough. We were able to put it out to bid and we were able to award a contract to Central Jersey Waste and Recycling, our current hauler and the one who did the program with us the whole entire time. So we do have a contract in place. We can open it up to a thousand homes now. It is $65 for the year. They will get weekly collection. We give them the container, the kitchen collector, and also bags to line it. And it's $65 for the year, but that covers everything, nuts to bolts, and it's drastically different expense than what they were paying. We had residents that were paying $65 for a month for weekly trash collection. So it's been great, it's been fun, it's been a lot of trial and error, a lot of hurdles to jump over, but we just keep jumping over them and our goal is to see a facility here in New Jersey so that we don't have to take it out of state, that we can process it right here and hopefully be able to do it even cheaper for our residents. It's been fantastic. Great, great. Congratulations on Thank that. You. A couple quick questions for you. What are the what is the resident putting aside that otherwise would have gone out in the trash before? What are they separating? Anything organic. The way we've always told them is if it grows, it goes. You can put meat, fish, bones, wax cardboard, pizza boxes, plate waste, leftover food, dairy products, uh, yard waste, leaves, branches, really anything that would grow or can grow. Pits, it's amazing what can go into that <laughs> container. That's why there's hardly any trash left over. When you couple it with the single stream recycling and and then all of that stuff that you put in the green organic cart, there's hardly any trash left over. That's terrific. It's and, very impressive. And Central Jersey Waste that has been working with you on this and just was awarded your contract. Yes. Uh, where do they take the material? It goes to Peninsula Compost Group in Wilmington, Delaware. It's yeah. 80 in 80 days from the time we pick it up at your curb, from the curb, from the kitchen to the curb, 80 days later it's compost. Compost. Yep. Okay. And then yep. they turn around and I assume sell that to yes. farmers? Yes. Or? They have started bagging it up for the most, when they first started this, it usually most of it went to uh, parks, uh, golf courses, things like that. They have been able to bag it now, so they do sell it in bags. They sell it. There is a store called Bloomers up on 206 in Princeton, so we are able to get it locally. And then also I have it shipped in for the people that are in the program. We bring it in in the spring, and we tell them where the pile is, and they can go get it and use it. And it's really, I can attest to it. I don't live in Princeton, but I did my front yard. In the spring, I dug up half of it, and I put it in a row of rose bushes and then in the fall I decided to do the same thing and put in rose bushes I mixed in the compost on the on the left hand side the difference between them 
same exact rose bush. One, about two feet tall. On the other side with the compost, I'm not kidding you, six feet tall, triple the size. Wow. It's gotta be the compost. Well, it's that's very, very impressive. Sounds like a scientific study to me. <laughs> yeah, very, very accurate one too. <laughs> a lot of research went into that. <laughs> well, I appreciate you sitting with us here today. And, Thank and you. I, it's cold, the second day of spring, but you, you never know it. It's pretty cold outside yes, here. Yes, a little and, bit of uh, snow this morning. Yeah, I just wanna ask one other question. I know there's a, a lot of people coming up to you and talking to you about your program. There, there obviously is interest among other yes. towns. You see other towns eventually adopting this? And what, nice. what would help to get others to? Well, you know, the biggest thing is that they, they have to sit down and look at their tipping fees. And then really, it's, it really is cheaper to do it. Even if they're tipping fees, here in Mercer County, we've got pretty high ones. But clear across the state, we're seeing the solid waste tipping fees get higher and higher and higher. So it's a perfect way for municipalities to offset costs and be able to at least keep offering the same services that they've always offered, but in a different way. So I definitely see it. I have talked to municipalities all over the state and then outside of the state. So mm -hmm. it's definitely going to go. It's definitely going to go. And we've got a lot of support from the DEP, too. Great. So, yeah. Well, that's terrific. Well, yes. thanks again. So Thank we, you. Oh, and uh, one last thing. If uh, I, do you have an online uh, source where people can find out more about your program? You can go to our t Princeton website, which is www.princetonnj.gov. And right on the left-hand side is the Curbside Organic Program. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.